going to read to you what your nephew Kevin said, all right? And you need to listen to this too. Clive, that's you, ended up paying £2,000 on our behalf and Christopher agreed to sell us 50% of the business. Christopher had a contract drawn up and he said he wanted a further £5,000 but there was no date it had to be paid for. Clive tried to take out a loan for the rest of the money but couldn't, so Christopher agreed to take 2000 as we needed to crack on and get the business back on its feet. Rubbish. Now, <laughs> definitely so what's going on. Let me be clear, that's what Kevin says. What happened, in other words, according to your claim, is that initially there was an offer for 14000 to buy the whole thing. You didn't have that money. No, I didn't. And so there was a subsequent discussion where it was said, in effect, that you could have 50% of the business for 7000 Correct. In other words, Christopher had valued the business at fourteen. Yep. You could have half for seven. Now, sir, you've never invested in a business before. No, You've never really. been involved in the catering industry. Did you look at the accounts or inspect any of Christopher's books before agreeing to this? No, not really. Now, this is where it gets less difficult for me. It's far easier. Because to this extent, Christopher, you did the correct thing. You went and by the look of it, you appear to have got legal advice. Did you yes. get legal advice? Yes, for uh, business, uh, company advice. Company advice. Very sensible. Mm -hmm. Very sensible indeed. And you drew up a contract. Yes. And in addition to drawing up a contract, which Clive and his nephew signed, you own still your 50% share. Yeah. No problem. These gentlemen own 25% each for an investment of 7000 Once you took this document, because Christopher didn't force you to sign it... No. So ..did you get independent legal advice? No, 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 no independent. I read, I read it, and from I read it, then I signed it. Understood. And did you understand two things? Firstly, that you were to be a 25% shareholder of the yes. business. Yes. The other 25% being owned by your nephew. Yes. 50% owned by him. Yes. Did you also understand that eventually you had to put in £7,000 to the Not business? Not me after putting £7,000. Excuse me? He's saying that. That you and your nephew had yes. to put in £7,000. Yeah. Now, in other words, there would be 3500 from you and 3500 yeah. £3 from your nephew. £2,000 was paid over to Christopher. How much of that From was your money? All of it is mine. Thank you very much. Kevin hasn't actually put any of his money into this business. No. Were you planning to work in this business? I was working in the business before I bought shares. Did he work in your shop before he decided to invest in it? Uh, Kevin brought him along after explaining to him that, you know, if you give me that money, but then I was told that come the next week I would get the two thousand pounds, which did not transfer. That's a lie. That's that is a lie. There were two sums paid. You look at, at the contract that draw up, and then you will see that you are lying. In the agreement, when is the rest of the money due? Uh, four weeks uh, after. If you read in paragraph there four... There is no, nowhere in there in show there. you that you are such paragraph a liar. Four. Why are you lying, mate? Paragraph we four. did not have no agreement when it's supposed to be. In paragraph section 4.13, I've got a subsequent letter that I've sent them, you know, reminding that, that them that have they have not completed the, the contract. That don't have a thing to do with the case. I've only got 4.2. Well, that do, what are you saying don't have nothing yeah, to do with the case? somewhere at the back of it, somewhere not remembering. It's Where in it's there and it states that it must be paid... Uh, within four weeks of signing so that things can be <laughs> sent off to company house oh, and all forms could be sent, relevant forms, be sent to company house so that the company could be registered. And until then, He's this was an interim, you, Anna. as it states on the front of that... This agreement, be quiet, this agreement has been entered into as a deed on the date stated. It is noted that a payment, £2,000... Yes, will that's, be... that's it. I'm awfully sorry, sir, you're going to have to not interrupt. OK. Once that document had been signed, am I right, Christopher, that the relevant formalities were made... Well, then put it this way. That Companies House were informed and that Clive and his nephew were placed on the relevant register no. as owners of that business? No. That didn't happen at all? No, because they did not sign the contract, the final contract. <laughs> that is an interim... If you note there, temporary interim contract. This document was an interim agreement. 
what it does is it expresses Clive and his nephew, but Clive's intention, intention to invest in the business. To complete the contract, he and or his nephew together, collectively, had to pay £7,000, right? Once that money had been handed over, the whole lot, the relevant formalities would have ensued, would have followed, and he and his nephew would appear on the relevant company documents as joint 50% shareholders of the business. But until that happened, till the money had been handed over, they were not. Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honour. Why did the business close down? What happened? Because I specifically told him, you cannot drink and smoke inside the shop. And he and Kevin have an argument over a business account because everything going into is account only. I'm going to read what and, Kevin and I'm going to read what Kevin says. Christopher was unprofessional. He would drink while working in the cafe. He would let stock run out. He was taking money from the business and paying it into his personal account without warning. After three weeks, he just shut the business. We've been completely reasonable with Christopher throughout all of this, never threatening or difficult. We knew this was never going to work out, so simply ask the £2,000 back, but he's refused. I'd known Christopher a few years and built some trust up with him, but everything that's happened has changed the way I see him. He can be very ignorant. And he's been slandering myself and Clive's names, telling people we robbed him, which isn't true. That's what he says. What's it done to you to lose that money if you lose it? What does that mean to you? It's my saving. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge end of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now, that's an order.